Hello everyone. So today we are going to discuss what is super question theorem. This super question theorem or super question principle forms the basis of linear circuits. Okay, a system is said to be linear if it obeys super question principle and homogeneity property. Okay, so let's look into the details of super question theorem. Super question theorem, right? What is super question theorem? It states that the response in any linear element of a linear active bilateral network containing multiple independent sources is the algebraic sum of the individual responses due to each independent source acting alone with all other sources replaced by their respective internal inferences. That is, voltage sources are replaced by short circuits and current sources are replaced by open circuits. Okay, the response. What do you mean by response? Response means output. Okay, so in any element of a linear active bilateral network, right? What do you mean by active network? Active network, network means one which has energy sources, say like current source or a voltage source, right? So the response in any element, the output, the out, output may be either current or maybe a voltage, okay? So the voltage or current in any element of a linear active bilateral network containing multiple independent sources is the algebraic sum of the individual responses due to each independent source acting alone with all the sources replaced by their respective internal inferences. So, active means a network which contains voltage source or a current source. Okay, it's such, an element, such a network is called an active network. What do you mean by bilateral? Bilateral element means one whose properties remain the same in either directions. Say, for example, you have a resistance. Okay. Suppose this is 10 volt, this is 10 ohm, right? So in, right now what happens, a current of one ampere will be flowing, okay? Now let me change the polarity of the battery. It is like this. So what happens, now the current starts flowing like this. Again, it remains the same. Magnitude remains the same, it's one ampere, okay? But if you have a diode, we know that a diode, when it is forward biased, it will be a short circuit, right? And when reverse biased, it acts as an open circuit like this okay so in this case it the diode will act as a short circuit and in this case it it acts as an open circuit okay so this is a unilateral element right whereas resistances inductances capacitances they are all bilateral elements okay bilateral network contains so a network which contains a combination of sisters inductors capacitors etc right the response in any element in any element okay the output current, the response may be either output current or maybe a voltage across the resistance, inductance, or capacitance, right? It is nothing but what the algebraic sum of the individual responses due to each independent source acting alone, okay? So we know that an ideal voltage source is an element which gives constant voltage, okay, independent of the load resistance or load impedance connected here, right? It gives a constant voltage, right? What's the internal resistance or internal impedance of an ideal voltage source? It is zero, it's a short circuit, right? But a practical voltage source will always have some element of a small value of impedance in series like that, like this, okay? This will be a practical voltage source, right? So if it's an ideal voltage source, its internal resistance, its internal impedance must be zero or it must be a short circuit. Similarly, if you consider an ideal current source, what's an ideal current source? One which gives constant current independent of the load, okay? One which gives a constant current. But practical uh, current source will have some risk impedance or some in, uh, some impedance in parallel to the source. Okay, this is that this is I. Okay, so in the case of ideal elements, we have to replace them with their internal impedances. That means voltage sources are to be replaced by short circuits and current sources are to be replaced by open circuits. This is what the su the super question theorem states. Okay, let's take one or two problems. Obtain the voltage Vx using super question theorem. What is Vx? Vx is the voltage across this channel. Okay, so see here we have two independent voltage sources. One is 5 angle 30 volt and one is 10 angle 0 volt. Okay, so what, what next? We have to consider one source at a time. So when you consider this voltage source 5 angle 30 volt alone, what happens? This 10 angle 0 must be short. Voltage source must be short circuited, current source must be open. Okay, so when you consider, let us see. 5 and 30 volt alone. So when 5 and 30 volt alone, we are considering this must be 10 and 0 must be shorter like this. Okay, this has been shorter. 
Now what next? You can solve for the current through channel. Okay, any method. I have used uh, mesh method. Okay, so there are three currents: I1 dash, I2 dash, I3 dash. You have to solve for I3 dash. Okay. So this will be the inverse matrix, and this will be the um, voltage vector. Okay. So when you solve for I3 dash, we have to we have to solve for I3 dash, and hence V X dash. So I3 dash will be 0 0.0855 angle 45.31 ampere. So that into 10 will give you the voltage V X dash. Okay. So keep in mind when this is shorted, this is not V X. This is V X dash. Okay. So you will get V X dash as 0.855 angle 45.31 volt. Okay. Now what next? You have to keep this source acting alone. That is 10 volt source acting alone. Okay. So when you keep 10 angle volt acting alone, this must be shorter. Okay, that's what's shown here. It's shorter, right? Now again, you have to find what's I3 double dash and hence Vx double dash. Okay. So if you do this mesh method, you will get a three by three inference matrix as shown here. This will be your corresponding voltage vector. Okay, from which you will get your I3 double dash as 0.4844 angle 174.61 ampere. Right? So what will be Vx double dash into 10? You will get 4.844 angle. 174.61 volt. Okay. So now when both sources are acting at a time, right? What you have to do, you have to simply add the currents I3 dash plus I3 double dash. Okay. So you will get I3 as this thing. So your Vx will be equal to what? This thing. 4.353 angle 165.86 volt. That is one way. Or you can calculate what is your Vx dash and Vx double dash. That is another way. Okay. You can calculate what is Vx double dash and what is Vx dash. Okay, then you can add it up also, right? Like this. So it should match with what you are getting. It should be 4.353 angle 165.86 volts. Okay, keep in mind here the question was to calculate what is Vx using superposition theorem. Suppose the question is to verify, find Vx and hence verify superposition theorem, right? If the question is to verify, then we have to find Vx dash, Vx double dash, as well as Vx. Are you following me what I said? For example, suppose A plus B, but you see, okay. How can you verify this? Verification means you have to find the left-hand side, you have to find the right-hand side, and two, they are equal, okay? So if the question is to verify the theorem, then you have to find what is Ix, what is Ix dash, what is Ix double dash, or what is Vx dash, what is Vx double dash? And then you have to find what is I3, which is sum of these things, and Vx, okay? So you have to prove that Vx dash plus Vx double dash is equal to Vx, or like that, okay? So this is what we mean by proving, okay? Here the question was to find the voltage across Tenno using superposition theorem. So you need not prove, you need not consider both the sources acting at a time, okay? Otherwise, you should have considered it. When both the sources are acting at the same time. Okay. So this is a verification. Okay. When both sources are acting at a time. So Vx equal to this. Right. Next question. Find IAB and VCG using mesh current method. Okay. So here we have a voltage source, three volt voltage source, as well as a two ampere current source. So first we will keep three volt alone. So keep in mind other voltage sources and other voltage sources must be short circuited current sources must be open. So now I will keep three volt alone, which means what two amber has to be open. Okay, this has been open, right? So now we have to find the current. Okay, so if you apply mesh method, you will get three angle zero equal to three minus one minus one eight into I1 dash, I2 dash, right? From which you will get your I2, I1 dash and I2 dash like this. What's the question? Question is to find I, A, B and B, C, D. Okay, so IAB means current through AAB, right? So what will be IAB dash? IAB dash will be I1 dash minus I2 dash. You will get 0 0.9131 ampere. And what will be VCG dash? VCG dash will be what? This voltage, okay? So you have to move from here to here. This current is flowing like this. So this is plus positive, this is negative. This current is flowing through the forearm from right to left. So this is plus, this is minus. So as you move from lower potential, Minus plus potential, rise, two into I1. Again, minus plus potential, rise, plus four into I2. Okay, so two into I1 plus four into I2. You will get 2.6086 volt. What is this? 
CCG dash. And what is 0.9131 ampere? That is IAB dash. Okay, when the corresponding to when 3 volt alone is acting. Now what next? 2 ampere alone is acting. So when 2 ampere alone is acting, the voltage must be short like this. Okay, so now we have to find I1 double dash and I2 double dash. I3, okay, I1 double dash and I2 double dash. So from loop 2, what do you get? From loop 2 directly, you'll get I2 double dash as 2 ampere. Okay, then loop 1, what do you get? For this, assume current direction 1 into what? I1 double dash minus I3 plus 2 into what? I1 double dash plus I2 double dash. Okay, so that means 3 I1 double dash minus I3 equal to minus 4. Then loop 3, what do you get? For third loop, 3 plus 1, 4, 4 plus 4, 8, 8 I3 minus I1 double dash plus I2 double dash equal to 0. Okay, so from which you will get this thing, right? So there are three equations, there are two equations and two unknowns from which you can solve for I1 double dash and I3, right? So what will be your IAB double dash? IAB double dash will be I1 double dash minus I3 from which you will get minus 0.5218 ampere. And what will be your BCG double dash? This voltage from this point to this point you have to move, okay? So you can find two into, so this current is, so if you are moving this branch, this is plus and this is minus here, right? Similarly, this is plus and this is minus. So what do you get? Plus two into this thing, plus four into, so, so, so this current is entering here. This is plus here and minus here, okay? You are traversing this path. So plus four into what? I2 double dash plus I3. So you will get 3.6526 volt and minus 0.5218 ampere when two ampere alone is acting. So when both are acting, what will you get? You just, you just need to take the algebraic sum. Okay, so if you remember, this was the voltage, 0 0.62, point, sorry, 6.2612 volt. We had solved the same problem using mesh method and nodal method. Similarly, current IAB was 0.3913 ampere. If you want to verify what you have to do, that you consider both the source at a time and solve. You will get IAB as 0.3913 ampere and BCG as 6.2612 volts. Okay, so these were the cases when we had independent sources. Now let us take the case when we have dependent source. Using superposition theorem, find the power dissipated in R2. What is R2? R2 is this resistance. Okay. So there are two voltage sources, one 10 angle, one 10, 10 volt, one 5 volt. We have one current source 2 ampere, and there is one dependent voltage source. Okay, two years. Okay. What to do? We have to keep one independent source at a time. You cannot read, remove the dependent source. Okay, because that is dependent on current or voltage somewhere else. So here we have a voltage dependent voltage source. Okay, so dependent source you cannot remove. Only you can replace independent sources by their respective internal impedances. Okay, so when 10 volt alone is acting, when 10 volt alone is acting, what we have to do? We have to short circuit 5 volt source. That we sorry, we have to short circuit 5 volt source and open circuit the 2 ampere current source. Okay, that is what we are seeing here. So this voltage source has been shorted current source has been open. Now we have to find the current what is I dash. Keep in mind, this is not Vx anymore, this is Vx dash. So this will be two Vx dash, okay? How can we solve this? Mesh method, okay? So I have, there are two loops, currents I1 and I2, right? Loop one, what do you get? For this assume current direction minus two plus potential rise, 10 minus two Vx dash must be equal to what? Four I1 minus I2, two I2, okay? From loop one. Now loop two, what will you get? Zero equal to what? Zero equal to what? Two I two. Sorry, so from loop two, what will you get? Or from here, you will get what? Vx dash, what is that? That's a voltage across two ohm. That means two into I two. Then from loop two, what will you get? That is no partial rise. Zero equal to what? Minus two I one, right? Minus two I one plus four I two. Okay, so if you solve these things, you will get I one and I two as two and one ampere respectively. So what will be your I1 dash? I1 minus I2, that means one ampere, okay? So this I1 dash, when 10 volt alone is acting, okay? Now what next, when two ampere alone is acting? So when two ampere alone is acting, the other two voltage sources must be shorter, fine? So, so here I will apply nodal method, which is for convenience, okay? So let this be a node voltage V1. So what will you get? Node one, so, Two ampere is entering, so two equal to what's the current through this branch? V1 
plus 2bx plus 2bx double dash okay this will be double dash now plus 2bx double dash divided by 2 then current through this 2 ohm will be what v1 by 2 then current through this 2 ohm will be what v1 by 2 so sum of currents entering must be equal to sum of currents leaving here only one current two amperes entering and all of the currents are leaving right so that means but what is vx vx double dash it is nothing but 2 into vx double dash is what vx double dash is v1 same as voltage v1 right so you can substitute that from which you will get your v1 as 0.8 volt so once you know v1 you can find the current through 2 ohm how i double dash will be what v1 divided by 2 which means 0.4 ampere right now moving on now we have to consider 5 i a 5 volt alone is acting so when 5 volt alone is acting the other voltage source must be shorted current source must be open so here this is vx triple dash okay i forgot to uh, add that triple dash right now what next here again so the corresponding current will be i triple dash you can again assume a um, uh, method uh, nodal method or oh, sorry the mesh method okay you can apply the mesh method right so what do you get so for this assume current direction minus plus potential right so that means 2 vx triple dash uh, so this is i1 right so it's as you move from here minus plus potential rise 5 equal to what partial drop so as you move here this is partial drop so vx double dash plus uh, 2 into what i1 plus i2 okay if you simplify that you will get 5 equals 4 i1 plus 2 i2 then from loop 2 what will you get for this assume current direction all are potential drops only okay so you will get minus 2 vx equals 4 i2 plus 2 i2 right and what else vx triple dash must be equal to what 2 into i1 okay so three equations and three unknowns from which you can solve for i1 and i2 so you will get i triple dash as i1 plus i2 and that will be 0.5 ampere so what is the total current when all the sources are acting at a time it will be sum of this thing i, I dash plus i double dash plus i triple dash so what will be the power dissipated i square r2 if you get 16.82 watts okay so this is how to apply super theorem fine right? now you can consider these things there are two, three more examples i have just given you can cross verify that okay apply super theorem and find your i1 and i2 is like this okay this is one this is the next example okay you have to find what is determined voltage vx using Superposition theorem. How many sources, independent sources do we have here? Two independent sources, one current source and one voltage source. Okay, do that. And one more example is there. Here we have to find the voltage Vx. Okay, using superposition theorem. So you have to keep one source at a time. Okay, so when you keep the voltage source, this current source must be open. When you keep this voltage so the current source this volt 8 volt source must be shorter okay and last example determine the current i naught you have to find this current i naught using super question theorem again when you keep the voltage source alone you open circuit the current source and when you keep the current source alone you short circuit the voltage source you should get your i naught as 6.1201 angle 144.78 amperes so this is how to do with Super question theorem. I hope this is clear to you. If you have any doubts, you get back to me. Okay? Thank you.